TLS or SSL termination proxy is a proxy that terminates the TLS session and sends unencrypted traffic to the main server. This offloads complex crypto TLS from the main server to this proxy so the main server can do what it does best, serve. In this video, we will discuss the pros and cons of the TLS proxy, we will talk about the forward proxy, and we will initially talk about what TLS is because we had a video about TLS, right? But it's always good to always just do a TLDR quick about that. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Hussein, and in this channel, we discuss all sorts of software engineering by example. So if you want to be become a better software engineer, consider subscribing, hit that bell icon so you get notified when I make a new video about software engineering. With that said, let's just jump into this video, guys. All right, here's the agenda. As we're going to talk about, this is going to be a short video that I want to make, like a very digestible video. And uh, you might, this this TLS termination concept be foreign, but it is used in a lot of applications and software out there. Okay, it's just hidden from us. But if you're a back-end engineer, okay, or quote-unquote full stack, I hate that term, but it, you will have to work with this at some point. So we're going to discuss about TLS 1.2. I'm not going to talk about 1.3 because we did that. I'm going to talk about TLS 1.3 because it's still the dominant uh, version there. That is, it has some flaws that make these guys good, right? TLS termination proxy, I'm going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about TLS 4 proxy, which is this is now getting more dominant because of the cloud, right? We're going to talk about that old stuff. And, uh, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of this technology, termination, right? Why I want to terminate a proxy. Okay, so let's go, quickly go about to, talking about the uh, transport layer security, version 1.2, the the first official version, in my opinion. And uh, it has some flaws, and I like to highlight those flaws. It has been fixed in 1.3, and we made a video about TLS. Go watch that full video if you're interested to know the deep dive into that but essentially what tls 1.2 does is like hey the goal of this is to establish https connection but before we do that we establish the tcp the raw connection okay three handshake and all that jazz and then after that the client says hello and it sends a bunch of information it says hey here's the cryptos i support i support ds i support blowfish i support uh, EAS and for that's for symmetric for asymmetric I support Diffie Hillman RSA and all that stuff right and the server says okay mm, okay there's my public let's use this and uh, let's uh, start agree on the key and then the client again sends the cipher okay which which is like okay I'm gonna select that I'm gonna create the key for you encrypted okay and then encrypt it with your public certificate and then send it over so that they both now have the same symmetric key so they can essentially encrypt right so the goal of this is to agree on this golden key this key has to be symmetrical on both of them okay and we talked about why we use symmetric key instead of public uh private key for message exchange right because it's, it's much faster okay public asymmetric key is great but it's very expensive and has advantages. And again, we talk, we talked, we talk, we talked about encryption. Go, go watch that video, guys, if you're interested. Okay, so we know what TLS is. We know what all this is. This is the handshake for TLS. Okay. All right. So we talked about TLS. We talked about how it works. This handshake. This. Okay. We know that it's now there's multiple round trips to do that. So there's much some expense to do that. Okay. And uh, let's talk about TLS termination proxy so it's a proxy that literally what it does it it is facing the client okay and the client and the proxy will agree on your message okay and then start decrypt encrypting the traffic so they will agree on this key between them essentially and they will encrypt your traffic between the client and the proxy this could be a load balancer a service mesh proxy uh uh, varnish uh, any web server that supports termination right and then why do we do that okay we can obviously 
do this all skip this proxy altogether, right? But we know what the benefits of proxies that we have to add it, like a load balancer, reverse proxy, better analytics, intrusion system, they, you can you can cache stuff. So that's why we need we add a proxy in the middle. But the benefits of decrypting this traffic is for the proxy to make better decisions on the data. If the proxy does not decrypt the data and that does not terminate the TLS, it has no idea what the data in, what the data has, and accordingly, it cannot help you, right? It cannot cache it, obviously. It cannot trust it if it's cached, okay? It cannot do load balancing, cannot do any of this beautiful stuff that a proxy is supposed to do, right? It's just a dumb, transparent proxy at that uh, layer four uh, proxy at that, at that end, right? So what we do is like we terminate the traffic here and then essentially communicating with the original server that have the service and that becomes essentially an encrypted traffic and it's an internal thing. So say, like, okay, it's okay. I trust this. It's okay to be an, an uh, unencrypted traffic. Okay. Some people don't like this. That's we, that's why we talk about TLS forward proxy. So here's what happens here. So this is the, the server that has the actual application. This is the proxy, right? And this is the client. So what happens here, the client can connect to the proxy, whether this is an explicit proxy or that's the IP, the destination IP address. The client and the server will agree on the key and then they do the handshake. And then here's what happened. The proxy decrypts the traffic, looks at it, makes the decisions, let the intrusion detection system do a work, let varnish HTTP accelerator does it work. And all the applications here, they can run here or can they can key off some APIs of the proxy, some eventing like Kafka can fire off events based on certain things. And you can, they can do all of that stuff here because now it's unencrypted in that proxy, right? But the, once that proxy does its job, they now negotiate another TLS session between the actual server and the encrypt uh, and the proxy itself. That's another key set of keys. Yeah, you you have noticed, right? So that we they have agreed on another set of keys, right? So we have essentially two TCP connections here, one and two, right? I mean, the, the original one is also these two TCP connections, but the additional cost here is that main server is also now doing crypto, at least for the initial handshake, right? It's not doing this round trip every time, right? It's just doing it for, for the handshake. And then after that, it's like the, uh, the compute of encrypting and decrypting is it's pretty fast because it's symmetric key, right? And then that's a beauty of this, right? So now, I'm secure. People are happy. So here's what we do. We re-encrypt the traffic with the HTTPS. And now, even if this is the cloud, if this is Amazon and you don't trust Amazon hosting your data, yeah, you can just use a TLS forward proxy, not a termination, not just a termination, right? So TLS forward proxy is a termination, a TLS termination proxy, but it's also forward that TLS connection by re-encrypting it essentially, okay? So a lot of people are just using this now, most of the time. They most of, probably, uh, they don't just use forward unencrypted traffic because you don't, sometimes you don't trust this. If this is your work and it's internal and it's like completely internal VIP, uh, VIP internal uh, IP addresses that you know that nobody's, yeah, you can leave it unencrypted, but and uh, yeah, so most people just re-encrypt this with the TLS for a proxy. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this technology. TLS proxy, pros. It offloads the crypto, right? So now, obviously, the proxy takes that connection TLS and does that and then uh, does the handshake and all that crypto magic, right? And then after that, it, it just forwards pure unencrypted HTTP, which is faster, obviously, than the HTTPS to the backend. Okay, so it's offloads proc uh, crypto to this proxy and the main server can do what it does best, which is just serve you your APIs, right? I added meh here because this is no longer the case because most main server at the backend can do these operations. Plus the second thing is 
this is just this compute heavy is just at the beginning, right? At the handshake, after which the, once the TCP connection, the TLS connection is, session is established, everything just becomes normal, right? It's just very quick, right? So I added meh there. And plus DLS 1.2, yeah, there is like four round trips just to establish the handshake. TLS 1.3 cut down in half and made it just two round trips, right? So it's like one request and then request and you're done. You can immediately encrypt, which is way faster now. Okay, so now that doesn't even matter, right? Because even if I use TLS 1.3, yeah, I can use it. It's, it's, it's cheap to use TLS, so let's use it. Okay, so that's a lot of people have this mentality. It's like, since it's cheap, let's use it. Okay, uh, compute is cheap. It's just a flawed, right? So really depends up to you guys. Uh, TLS close to the client. I like this. Uh, so now the you can, the client can be way far, right? So this could be in Asia, okay, let's say India, and then your server, the actual API server that has your application is in West Virginia. Obviously, if you establish a TLS handshake between those two, right, it will be very slow because of the four round trip we talked about if, uh, if we were using 1.2, right? Not much with 1.3, but it will be really slow. So what do we do is, Say, okay, let's make a, let's install a proxy server in India and let's use a, tel a TLS termination there. So we, we are essentially closer to that client. But yeah, you can install a proxy next to that uh, server, next to your client, so they can geographically be located. So you have better performance. Okay. Uh, you can use, once you can decrypt, right, and terminate the TLS and decrypt and see what the data is, you can use the powerful HTTP accelerators, which is caching and and, and uh, look at the content and then resolve host names and it compacts JavaScript, it compresses the files, it just, uh, it just looks at the JavaScript and make it even faster if, it's, if the JavaScript doesn't do its job right properly, it can rewrite the JavaScript to make it even better. So Varnish is a great application. We're, we're going to make uh, a, a a dedicated video about varnish you guys asked me about that so i added that here so so thank you so much for adding uh, asking about that actually uh, i like i like you your guys comments it's, it's the best thing you guys are giving me content creation you are the content creation machine for me so http accelerator yeah once i do that i can take advantage of http accelerators because traffic is decrypted at least on my proxy right and then intrusion detection systems, so those are for attacks like DOS, uh, DDoS, and other kind of attacks that tries to uh, kind of take over your system. You want to sniff the data, your proxy, to sniff the data and detect this kind of attack. And to sniff the data, it has to be unencrypted, right? So either sometimes you can give the key to the intrusion detection system so it can decrypt, or somehow give an API access to your proxy. Okay, that, that in the other hand could be a little bit more tricky to implement. Uh, obviously, load balancing at layer seven, right? Specifically at layer seven, I had to say that, okay? And uh, if you guys want a different know but they want load balancing at layer seven, load balancing at layer four, I made a video about the difference between the two. Obviously, you have more context at layer seven because it's the application layer and you know what or what kind of headers are sent, what kind of location are you going and that's what makes it great for service mesh and microservices architecture right in kubernetes right and and it's it's being used pretty much all service mesh proxies have tls termination feature because it has to right guys it has to terminate the the session because it needs to read what's going on the data where are you going with this and then re-encrypt it later because it's sending it to another microservice, which it doesn't trust, obviously, all right? You don't trust anything. You have, especially in a microservices architecture, these services are written by different teams, different companies, different vendors. So you always need to use TLS in the middle. So forward TLS proxy is, is the way to go here. Uh, cons, okay, what's wrong with this? So if you have one single machine, that terminates the TLS proxy and you have at the back end like seven main servers, now you have a bottleneck, right? And that bottleneck is only true if it's a layer seven 
uh, TLS termination because you cannot have term TLS termination at layer four anyway. But what happens here is you're limited by the maximum number of, of uh, file descriptors that you can have on your server, right? And that's the maximum number of connections. And because now you're establishing connection between the client and the proxy and the proxy and the servers, now you're running out of TCP connections at the end, right? You're going to quickly run out of the TCP connections. Layer 4 load balancers are much better at this because it keeps a NAT table and it doesn't really, it's just one connection between the client and the main server. It's just literally just bounces back and kind of acts like a gateway if you, if, you, if you think about it, like your router in this case, All right? So yeah, so you're limited by max connect, so you have to do uh, multiple proxies, multiple load balancers, layer sevens, and add maybe another layer four load balancer in front of it maybe add multiple layer four load balancers and then add a dns load balancer there you can add multiple entries in your dns and have the dns point to one of those load balancer which will can kind of funnel into your application okay if compromised all data is available obviously right that's another big problem it, since the proxy terminates the tls if a proxy has a web server obviously it's a web server right and if that web server has a vulnerability and that vulnerability got exposed like a zero day uh, vulnerability and someone gain access to your proxy, all your data is available for the take, right? The attacker have access to you essentially and they can just take all, right? And that's the, that's the only thing I can think of. You can, If you guys can think of more pros or cons, leave it on the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And uh, I'm going to see you in the next one. What do you want to see next? What would you like to learn next? Okay. Or we'll learn together, right, guys? So leave it in the comment section. I'm going to see you in the next one, guys. You guys stay awesome.